Now I've got a restaurant quality chocolate tart using an everyday ingredient that we'll probably all be familiar with. The first thing we need to do is make a chocolate pastry. I'm gonna start off by creaming some icing sugar and butter together. I mix the sugar and the butter together quite slowly so it doesn't all fall out. We just wanna bring this together into a rough paste. Once you have that rough paste, you can go in with the cocoa powder. It doesn't look like a lot, but this is quite powerful. And this isn't a very conventional way of making pastry, but because we're gonna make the cases so thin, it needs to be quite durable. A mix. Once the cocoa powder emulsifies, straight in with our plain flour. Once that flour binds together, we have what's starting to look a bit more like pastry. To finish binding it, we're gonna add two eggs and about a teaspoon of salt. At this point, we we'll mix it for about 30 seconds till it's a really light and wet paste, then it's ready for the fridge. Once that's come together, we're gonna to take it out, we're gonna break it down into cling film and wrap it. These then go into the fridge to set overnight. So the next day I took the pastry, I rolled it about a centimetre thick, cut it out into these discs, which are the perfect size for our tart cases, and now all I have to do is roll them individually, line the cases and bake them off. This is a very simple technique to get your perfectly shaped tart cases. Dust a little bit of flour on the board. I take my pastry disc, which has been dusted in flour so nothing sticks, and then just lightly roll it, moving it on the compass every few turns so we get a perfect circle. So once I have it roughly into this shape, I take my little non-stick tart cases, line the case so it gets into all the little corners. Second one on top, good squeeze, then it's gonna go into the freezer to set hard again before we cut it up. It takes about 15 minutes and the pastry freezes so it's nice and easy to cut. What I do is I grab a small paring knife and using the bottom tar case, I follow the line all the way around so we get a perfectly edged tar case. So I stick them on a tray and they go into the oven at 180 degrees for nine to 10 minutes. So they only take about 10 minutes. So they're nice and hard throughout. We'll have a look. There you can see. That nice sharp edge that we cut gives us a perfect edge on the tar case. Now time to introduce our everyday chocolate to our restaurant quality tart. You could spend a load of time making some fancy fillings, but this is a handy cheat. All I do is take out my Ferrero Rocher, stick them in a hand blender and blend them up to a paste. You've got hazelnuts in there, biscuit, hazelnut ganache, chocolate. All things that go really, really well with warm chocolate as well. And they're gonna give us a bit of texture in the base of the tart. All I do is scoop a bit out and line the bottom of our tart cases. What makes this tart restaurant quality is the fact we use a souffle mix and we get a lovely warm dome on top of our tart case. It's very, very simple. We melt some chocolate and butter, then we make a meringue with some egg yolks. We bring it all together. I'm melting 70% chocolate here which is dark, bitter, and full of flavor. And I'm melting that down with some salted butter, just over a little bain-marie pot of steaming water. While the chocolate and the butter melts down, we're gonna make a very simple meringue. It's gonna add all the air to our souffle mix, give us that dome on top of the tart. So I go in with my egg whites. I'm gonna slowly start whipping them. The slower we make the meringue, the more stable the mix will be at the end. When the egg white starts to aerate, I go in with half of my caster sugar at this point. Now the meringue is done. We know it's done because it's holding stiff peaks and it's nice and shiny throughout. At this point, we're going to bring everything together for the souffle mix. So I take our chocolate and butter mix off the heat and mix it so it's properly emulsified. Now it's very important we take it off the heat before we add our egg yolks in here so that they don't cook too quickly. 
Now when we've taken a little bit of heat out of that chocolate and butter mix, we're going in with our egg yolks. We're going to break them up, mix them through. Don't be afraid, the mix will go a little bit grainy at this point. Now once that egg yolk is mixed through, we're going to add our meringue in three stages. The first part of the meringue goes in, we're going to loosen up the mix. So after one stage, you're looking at something like this. Now the second stage of meringue goes in, and we're going to fold it very lightly, keeping as much air as possible in the mix. Finally, the last of the meringue. It's crucial. We keep as much air as possible in, so we get that lovely domed effect on the finished tart. And you'll see when the mix is ready, it's that little pouring consistency off the spatula. It may look quite wet, but if it's too stiff, it will crack. This should be absolutely perfect. I'm going to place some of the mix in a piping bag so we can pipe it neatly and accurately in our tart case. At that point, they're ready to go into the oven at 190 degrees for eight to nine minutes. Whoa, look at that. Just to finish it off, a very light dusting of cocoa powder. Straight on the plate. That is simplicity at its best. Ferro Rocher chocolate tart souffle.